Okay, so I'm going to put together a Wattscraft finger throttle assembly. First, put the nylon bushes in either end. You can do this in the vise or the clamp, like I've got here. side you just want to keep them square when you put them in so they don't bind up so there's the two outside ones side one in. So again, if you use a vise, you can put a flat piece of metal behind one, then rest it on the jaws of the vise, and then knock this with a mallet and put it in, but I might be able to do it by hand here because I don't have a vise. So is that one in? With just a bit of flat metal. Like that. And then the other one, sneak it in there. And I use a bit of thin stainless steel, but a butter knife works. Just again, try and keep it straight. It's easier with a vise, you can get more force. as hard as you can and once you've got them most of the way in you can jam the throttle pull in between the two like that and sort of pull it side to side get those bushes all the way in so that this throttle pull can now move freely like that Got the bushes in. Now that you've got the four bushes in, you can put the Allen key grub screws into the cable pull and into the actual finger, th finger throttle itself. Now these grub screws go into drilled holes and I got one pre-drilled there and then once you've installed it on your steering wheel you need to look at the angle of the pull and work out where to put your other one to suit your particular steering wheel so you've got the diameter of the steering wheel like moving it in and out and you've also got the angle of the pull to suit the dish of the steering wheel and how far it needs to pull so if I get this here, I'm putting it together. The next part we put on is these uh, Starlock retaining washers. So they hold these outer bushes from falling out. So they're quite hard to push on, but you just push them on like this. They only go one way, so don't stuff it up. Again, it's easier in a workshop with a vise and pliers. So you can pull, pull the one on your finger throttle side on like that. And then you can put your cable pull in. So obviously that hole goes there. And you put this in with the, um, slide it in and you have You'd normally have a another s locking um, drill hole here for the Allen key to lock into. But it's not on this shaft at the moment. You slide it in like that. Put this the cable pull 
in like that and then just let this side come out just far enough so that you can put the locking washer on and the locking washer only needs to go a few millimeters onto the shaft just like that there's the locking washer there holding it on and then you pull it back so that's that bush is now retained by the locking washer and you want this whole assembly to move freely so if at this point it's still not moving freely you just just pull hard on this pull hard on this bit actually actually you want to check that before you put this retaining washer on so if it's still not moving freely which it is now should move really freely you can take this out and just move move this side to side so there's plenty of room and sort of push it so that these nylon washers are jammed in um, and, and, and in extreme cases if you've deformed the bushes you you, you know you can run an 8 mil drill bit through that to get it so it should should move nice and free on the shaft and then you can push this retaining washer into place and now that's pretty much stuck on there so hopefully you've got it in the right way around and then you can tighten this cable like I say there's normally a you'd normally have the locating hole here and this lo uh, there will be another locating hole like this underneath this allen key you tighten that up just finger tight like that just um you can put a little bit of Loctite on these just to make sure they don't go anywhere and also to isolate the aluminium from the stainless steel a little bit if it's a salt water application. And then that's together. And you just want that rotating really nice and free um, so that you've got a little friction and it's as easy to pull as possible. And then you can just do the same here. Like I say, this rotating hole, the Allen key goes in that hole. Just tighten it down like that, and that's all together. So that's how it works. And so for your setup, this is left long. So for a 350 millimeter steering wheel, this is about right where it is now. But if your steering wheel is a little bit bigger, there's some extra rod here to to put this um, finger pull further out, or you might want to drill this hole at a slightly different angle so if you've got a deep dish steering wheel you might need this cable pull at more of an angle this way so that when you're at full throttle you have this finger piece here touching the steering wheel and then that means that when you're off the throttle your finger has to go doesn't have to go as far to reach the throttle so you can ease more easily more easily pull the throttle at any time so you just need to have this set up with the steering wheel bolted on to know exactly where this needs to be but in most cases both of these holes top and bottom will be on the same angle so that the cable pull will be vertical when the cable pull will be vertical when the finger throttles vertical and um, yeah get in touch if you've got any questions about that and then it comes with five long bolts which go into through the steering wheel, a standard six six bolt sort of Momo style steering wheel. I recommend something really strong because there is a lot of force on the steering wheel when you're driving the boat. So cheap sort of cheap steering wheels you can buy don't usually last. And so these five long bolts go into these threaded holes here. And because of this cable pull, this this section is thinner, so there's a short bolt. Use a shorter the ten mil. 10 millimeter long countersunk M5 bolt here and then to bolt it to the SS steering column or whatever steering column you're using you'd use a M5 countersunk 10 mil which we supply or if you need a longer one for your steering column you can use longer bolts here but they're an M5 countersunk bolt and you just you know you'd bolt that all those the rest of the bolts go in, in these holes here 
and um, then you have a solderless six millimeter barrel nipple which goes into this piece to hold the cable and so you would adjust everything and then right at the when everything's complete and adjusted correctly you would tighten this onto your cable that so that goes at this throttle end and then this is a solder barrel nipple so if you're making your own cable we supply that so that you can solder this onto the carburetor or throttle body end of your throttle and um, complete it that way and then you're just left to make a simple Bowden cable with a 1.5 millimeter inner wire and it has to run through a hollow steering column either an ECCS steering column or whatever you're using but it has to be hollow so the cable can run through it and then the cable outer mounts the cable outer at the back of the steering column mounts to that and you'll see that in, in photos on the website and basically that's what comes in the kit cheers <laughs>